Southeast Asia is one of the top regions in the world for tourism due to its low crime rates, amazing street food, exotic culture, tropical weather, and beautiful landscapes. But what many people forget is that Southeast Asia is also an amazing place to see wildlife. In this video, I will explore my top five places in Southeast Asia to view wildlife. My name is Eddie, I'm a wildlife biologist, and I show you how to enjoy the natural world. For example, like in this video, showing you the best places to go in the world to find exotic wildlife. So hit the subscribe button and notifications if you want to see more. Now, because Southeast Asia is situated in the tropics, it has immense biodiversity and there are many exotic animals to see in lots of beautiful places. And one thing I should mention is that the five places in this video are places that I've been to personally and are only based on my experiences. I acknowledge that there are many other great places to see wildlife in this region, not mentioned in this video. So I have selected them based on not only their abundance of wildlife, but also on their overall natural beauty and their accessibility to tourists. So I will give a brief description of the places and I will also give you guys a few tips on visiting them. So let's get into it with number five is Cook Fuang National Park. And Cook Fuang is the oldest national park in Vietnam located in the north only 120 kilometers southwest of the city of Hanoi. The park has gorgeous landscapes of mountains with densely covered forests nestled with various habitats associated with different microclimates. I was there for only a day and I wish I had seen a lot more wildlife than I did, but I think I just happened to be unlucky because there are tons of wild animals to seek out. Over 120 species of reptiles and amphibians, 130 species of mammals, and over 330 species of birds. I did a one day bird watching tour that was relatively expensive for Vietnam. Now I'm 28. Yeah. I'm the youngest dude you've ever taken on a tour. Yeah. And the price of my food and lodging was included, but the actual price of my room was very cheap, just like most things in Vietnam. I stayed at the park headquarters in a private room and it was also close to the Endangered Primate Rescue Center, which is a great place to get up close to some beautiful endangered primates that have been rescued from poachers. And Cook Fuang is also close to Van Long, which is a reservoir with rock formations where you can see the endangered de la Corps langurs in the wild. And it is not too far away from Tom Cock and Trong An, which are both places with waterways that you go through these beautiful limestone mountains and rock formations and rice paddies. And you can take a boat tour around these places uh, for not too expensive. So I highly suggest that you go to those places as well if you go to Cook Fuang National Park. Now on to number four, which is Song Tra Nature Reserve, which is outside the town of Da Nang on the central Vietnam coast and also is not too far away from the tourist town of Hoi An. The reserve contains a mountain uh, over 850 meters above sea level on a peninsula that overlooks the ocean. And there's some cool history of this place. For example, during the war of American aggression as it is known in Vietnam, the mountain served as a military base used for radar communications and some of the radar domes are still visible. And American soldiers stationed here gave it the nickname Monkey Mountain because of the monkeys that live there. And the monkeys are why this place is so special. The red shanked langur is an endangered species that could go extinct in the near future. And I had the privilege to see some of these guys up close in the wild. I saw them on a bird watching and wildlife photography tour with a top notch guide whose name was Luck. What species of langur is this? Uh, this we saw red shanked, big langur. Red shanked langur? Yeah. Uh, we've just been taking photos and videos of these guys and they're just there eating the leaves Absolutely beautiful monkeys. So yeah, Monkey Mountain is an absolutely gorgeous place and obviously great for viewing wildlife So if you visit Hoi An or Da Nang, I highly suggest that you book a tour to go there Number three is Khao Sok National Park, which is in the middle of the southern peninsula of Thailand 
The reason I put Cowsock as number three on my list was not only for its wildlife, but also for the beauty of its landscapes. It is only a few hours away from the ferry ports on both the east and west coasts of the southern peninsula, so it is relatively not too far away if you are coming from some of the really touristy beach destinations like Koh Tao or Phuket. The park has large areas of tropical rainforest with lots of wildlife, including elephants, sun bears, and tapirs, all of which are really hard to see, but also has tons of monkeys and birds as well. The main attraction is the huge lake in the middle of the park that is surrounded by these large limestone mountains. And the water of the lake is this beautiful aqua blue color resembling seawater, but it is actually fresh water. I was in Kausok for two days, and for one of the days, I did a boat tour of this lake, which I highly suggest you do some sort of boat tour of the lake because it is a surreal experience to be out on the water there surrounded by those mountains. And on my tour, they brought us to a place where we had lunch, and then we went on a hike, and then adventurously trekked several kilometers through this cave where we saw bats. Some people are saying it's like a horror movie, bats hanging over you, there's spiders here and there. And on the way back, we caught some glimpses of some gibbons. The boat tour with meals included was no more than 30 US dollars per day for the entire day. And then for the other day I was in Kausok, I went on a birding tour around the actual town of Kausok, where I saw many birds and mammals. And by the way, the town of Kausok, it's a quaint little tourist town with plenty of accommodations at different levels with some really good restaurants. I would definitely recommend you staying there though. There are many other places in the park that you can stay. And for any general tourists not even interested in seeing wildlife, I would definitely recommend Kausok as a must-see destination during a trip to Thailand. Number two is what people say might be the best place to see wildlife in Vietnam, and that is Cat Tien National Park. It's only about 150 kilometers north of Ho Chi Minh City, and it is one of the largest areas of lowland tropical rainforest left in Vietnam. The World Wildlife Fund selected the park as one of its 200 global ecozones from its high biodiversity. And in 2001, Cat Tien was listed by the UNESCO as the 411th biosphere reserve in the world. And this place also has some cool history. During the war, some parts of it were burned and the effects can still be seen today, though the park has also come a long way recovering. I was in Cat Tien for almost two whole days and I saw a lot of great birds and monkeys, including an up close look at a great hornbill. Cat Tien is an excellent place for birding. Almost 350 species can be found here. And not too far away from the park headquarters, there are both observation towers and hides so you can get a better look at birds and other wildlife. All right, man, now I'm going inside the hide. All right, now I'm inside the hide. I did a birding tour for an afternoon for only about 40 US dollars. And my guide was excellent. His name was Trong and you should be able to find him if you go there. The park is separated from a tiny town by a river and entrance into the park is super cheap, which includes a ticket for a one minute long boat ride across the river. You can rent bikes to get around the park, which I definitely suggest that you do. And one place that is really cool is Crocodile Lake which is part of an expanse of wetlands with crocodiles and water birds. It takes a while to get to the trailhead from the headquarters, and then it is a nice hike through the forest until you get to a lagoon. So I would allow at least a half a day for a round trip there and back. There is also a gibbon sanctuary and a bile bear sanctuary uh, within the park, and they do tours of those places as well. I also went on an early morning boat tour, which was really cool, which I suggest you do as well. You can stay at the park headquarters if you want to, but there are also plenty of cheap places to stay in the town next to the park. And I stayed in a one-room bungalow at Green Hope Lodge for only $10 per night, which was an awesome deal. And the thing that I love about the town is that the tourism there is still very low key. So yeah, if you love wildlife and if you are going anywhere near Southern Vietnam, I definitely suggest going to Cat Tien National Park. And finally, number one is Cao Yai National Park.
Established in 1962 as Thailand's first national park, it is the third largest park in Thailand. It is two and a half hours east of Bangkok and has beautiful landscapes of mountainous rainforests and grasslands. Many online sources say that Khao Yai is the easiest place to see wildlife in Thailand. And I definitely saw more wildlife there than any other place in Southeast Asia. Some commonly seen animals include macaque monkeys, deer, gibbon, porcupine, and wild elephants. Even though when I was there, I actually did not get to see elephants. The park is home to around 300 resident and migratory species of birds and has some of Thailand's largest populations of various species of hornbills. The best time to visit Khao Yai for bird watching is during the dry months and during March and April during migration. And there is also a number of waterfalls in the park. Most of them are easily accessible by vehicles combined with a short walk. This park is very popular for both foreign and local tourists and the main roads can be very busy on the weekend. So I suggest trying to go during the week. When I went, I stayed in Pak Chong, the closest large town, which is about 30 minutes away from the gates of Khao Yai. And Pak Chong is a great place. It's authentic and not touristy. It has the best street food market that I found in Thailand. There's a bunch of other places to stay that are closer to the park outside of Pak Chong, and you can actually camp in the park as well. If you wanna save money, you can go by yourself or rent a car or a scooter, but I suggest doing a tour. I did a three-day tour through a company called Tauntaun Tours, which was no more than $200. My guide's name was Khan, and she was so knowledgeable about all of the native flora and fauna and so much more. Gotta be millions and millions of bats inside that cave. And you said they come out for an hour. An hour yeah, at a yeah, time? Yeah, 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 every day, like that. How many gibbons do you think we saw in this little stop uh, we had here? Uh, about five. Actually, about the, five? Yeah, the, actually the maximum of the gibbon group, about seven. Cool. But someday you can see only three in the group or four in the group, also depends on the, the family. Yeah, and cool. one and a half acre, you can find them one or two family in one and a half awesome. acre. Yeah. If you go to Thailand and want to see wildlife, I would no doubt go to Khao Yai no matter what. So guys, hopefully you liked the video and I hope that I gave you some useful information. I will put some links in the description below for the tours that I went on. I have more videos that I will post about finding wildlife in many places in the world. So if you are interested, remember to subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications. Also comment below if you have any suggestions for places to see wildlife in Southeast Asia. Thank you very much and I hope you get out and have some great adventures anywhere in nature sometime soon.